Well, I pray you guys grace, peace, and mercy are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So here we are on this Reformation Sunday, and if you're not sure who Martin Luther, don't confuse him with Martin Luther King Jr., who's another great man, but um, actually Martin Luther King Jr.'s father was named after Martin Luther. This is the Reformation of Martin Luther that happened in 1517 and took place, oh, I don't know, for the next 30 years or so, but... Um, um, where Martin Luther wanted to set free a message, set free the message that of, of truth, the message that each and every one of us should and, and holds on to for life, for a foundation that we would build our life upon. Um, and so this day, a lot of different things have kind of all collided on this day. We have um, Reformation Day celebrated here. We have actual Halloween coming up on, in a few days. We have Confirmation Sunday. You all look beautiful. Every one of you looks great. And, um, and, then, and then we have what else is taking place soon, just right around the corner? Oh, come on. Y'all don't want to say it in church, but you know what's coming. Election Day, right? Ah, yeah. Oh, he's going there in his sermon. Oh, hold on. Look out. Um, no, it's brought out a lot of just fun conversations. And, and I was actually talking with my dad. We were had lunch, and, and we were having a conversation. And I was like, we were, got into politics, as two men should do while having lunch. And, um, and while we were talking, we were, we were talking about just how amazing Israel's defense system is, right? And I was like, that is unbelievable. It's like 1,500 rockets, and every one of them just kind of popped out of the sky, right? And, and I was like, oh, I, boy, I sure hope America has a defense system like that. I was like, but America's so big. And then, and then he gets on one of his rants telling me the history of stuff I don't really want to know, right? And uh, so, and, and, uh, so and, 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 then, and then we kind of got in this conversation, and he's like, boy, you know, I wonder how much we just don't know right? And he's like, I just wonder how much we don't know. And, and there's so many things. And that's kind of where, where now that we're in uh, the, the election year, that's where politics are. You know, they all try to convince us of things that we should know, but, but we're not sure if we truly believe that. And, and we'll choose to believe some things and we choose to not believe some other things. And we're kind of all over the place. We're like, well, is Hunter Biden really a criminal? Is Donald Trump really a criminal? I don't know. And we're like, defend one or we defend the other and we believe one and we believe the other. And we're just kind of all over the place. And, and it's so confusing. Right, and and I, I think to myself, you know, one of the things about uh, our generation today is is they say that the the mindset of people today is that truth is all relative, right? That truth is is kind of something that exists within the eye of the beholder, and this is a, a common uh, mindset of today. So 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 you know, Holly here, she can have her truth, and and I can have my truth, and if Holly's truth disagrees with my truth, then then obviously, by definition, one of us has to be wrong, right? Except that's not how it works today, right? The, how it works today is we both say we're right, and we go, let's just get along, right? And, and the way we get along is, let's never have this conversation again, is what that translates into, right? And, and that's kind of how our world looks at truth, and, and truth is relative, and, and one person says, but who blames us for having this? Because... The world is so confusing. We're constantly being lied to, hidden from. We're constantly have people trying to say, convince us of things that are not true. We're constantly being marketed to, constantly having people bombard us with, this is truth, no, this is true, no, this is true, believe me, believe me, vote here, vote here, right? And we're like, well, who is right? And so then at some point, we just throw our hands up and say, there is no truth. It just must belong to everybody, however they wish it would to them and let's just move on with life right you can't you can't trust anything right um anybody an x-files fan yes x-files um so i love x-files i'm uh it's one of my closet nerdness and i watch x-files almost every night that's something you don't need to know about me and i wish you didn't um but uh um, one of the things about, I like about X-Files is what is, they have a couple mottos, right? And one of the mottos that they have is the truth, or, or no, I'm not going to do that one. One of them is trust who? 
no one. And, and that's, the, that's where our world has become, is, is trust no one. And I would even go so far as to say, don't, not only trust no one, but trust nothing at all except yourself. And so what we have is, is not an, a, an American denomination problem, because living within every single person is its own denomination across the world. Right, because we all kind of build our own tower of what truth is, and there's no objective place that we would now would turn to to say, here is where I can go to again and again and again and find the truth. So and if that is really truly the case, then what Jesus just said in, in our gospel lesson of John, right, where he says, the truth will set you free, right, then he must be again, deceiving us. If the truth will truly set us free. The Jewish people who heard it in that day looked at him and he said, set us free, sir, we are a children of Abraham. We have been enslaved to no one, which I always found really odd because just one book after Abraham, you get to the whole Exodus when they were all enslaved, right, by the Egyptians. And, and he says, so how is it that you can say that we're enslaved? And Jesus looks at him and he says, do you not know that every one of you who sins, you are a slave to sin? A slave to sin. Then that means not only the Jewish people are enslaved, but who else? Every one of us. You in me, each and every one of us, we are a slave to sin. Pastor, don't, don't pass your judgments on me. Don't tell me I'm a slave to sin. Let's test this. By the end of the night, tell me if you made it through the whole day without one wrong thought, one evil desire, one indulgence of eating too much, right? A confirmation dinner right after this service. Everyone's invited, right? One wrong thing at all. If you can make it through today, I would say congratulations. Now you're really doomed tomorrow. But we are all enslaved to sin, every one of us. And if you think you're not, go look in the mirror. And if you look in the mirror long enough, you'll learn you are. I'm not referring to a literal mirror. Reflect and contemplate on your life. So if that's the case, then Jesus turns to us and he says, look, the truth will set you free from what you are enslaved to, that sinful nature that plagues each and every one of us, that plagues each and every one of you, that sinful nature that you will fight and you will push against for the rest of your life. That sinful nature that will sometimes give you so much torment that you'll wonder, when can I ever be free from this? from the hurt, from the shame, from the guilt that I put on myself or that society and other people may put on us. When can I be freed from this? Remember Jesus' words, the truth will set you free. Well, what is that truth? Where does it lie? He says something else in that verse. I don't know if y'all caught it. We talk about grow, unite, serve, and share Jesus with others. When you think of share Jesus with others, you go to the Great Commission, right? Go and make disciples of, I always go through the who, what, where, when, and why of the Great Commission, right? So what is the what of the Great Commission? The what is go make disciples of all nations. Oh, I messed it up already. The what is go make disciples, right? What is, the, to whom? We're going to go what, who? Go make disciples of all nations to who? Ah, I did it again. <laughs> Go make disciples of who? All nations. What does that mean? Everyone, all people, right? All nations would exclude nobody. Go make disciples of all nations. How? Baptizing and teaching. Good job, Holly. See, confirmands are good, right? <laughs> Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and teach them to obey everything, or, or yeah, and teach them to obey everything I commanded you. And what is the promise God gives with that? Well, in the, in the scripture, that's true, but in the Bible verse, it says, and lo, I'll be with you always to the very end of the age, right? So, who, what, where, why? The Great Commission. Go make disciples of all nations. 
Go and share the message of Jesus with everyone. You'll hold on to that truth. Why? Because it's the truth that will set you free. Jesus says in that John text again, if you abide in my word, you will prove to be my disciples. If you build your foundation around my word, if you build your life upon my word, if you build your day in and day out, the beginning and the end and everything in between on my word, you will be my disciples. So what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? You build your life, not amidst all the chaos that's going on, not amidst all the voices that are calling for our truth, because here's the thing, every one of us, we will follow something, we will follow somebody, none of us are just independently living on our own, we're all influenced, we're all going to be influenced. The question is not whether or not you're going to build your life on something, the question is what are you going to build your life upon? Build it upon the word of God and thus be Jesus' disciple. So when you hear all the noise and everything going, no, my truth is truth. No, 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 my truth is truth. No, 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 my truth is truth. No, no, listen to me. This is where truth really is. And you'll hear it from everywhere else. Know this, the truth that you need to begin your foundational life on is that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, went into this world to die for you and he alone pays the price for all of your sins. And he sets you free from the tyranny of sin, death, and the devil himself. And that's how John ends that, or Jesus ends that message in John. He says, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the beginning the same way that I would say that Martin Luther started the beginning of the Reformation that would never end. And when we talk about what is it that Luther was trying to do, all Luther was trying to do is allow the gospel truth to be free to all people so they could hear it. So that you and I can stand here and hear the words of Scripture, scripture spoken to us. And we can hear it, that we can open up the Bible ourselves and read for it. That we would know who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for us. That was Luther's goal. Now he did that by writing an awful lot. We were trying to talk about this. I don't know if anybody needs can fact check that. But, but uh, I believe Luther wrote more than any other human being in history. I'm pretty sure that is true. Um, he wrote so much, but, but his message was simple. Hold on to Jesus and nothing else. And nothing else. From here on forward, I pray that that Reformation message of Christ alone, faith alone, the scriptures alone, would hold on to your life and all of our lives here for the rest of our lives, that we would build our life on that truth, that foundation that we can turn back to again and again and again. If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. For Jesus Christ is the truth. What does he say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Don't ever doubt it, but believe it. And hold on to it. And cherish it. But don't be selfish with it. Share it with the world around you.